Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor and, and Pastor Pam. I appreciate you all. I love you guys so much. And I'm grateful to be able to have the opportunity to invest into you and to bring the word. Amen. God is faithful. The word of God is what we should always endeavor to live our lives on. Amen. That should be the foundation that we build our life on, no matter what it is. And so in life, we're going to realize that there's a lot of things that happen. And in order for us to get through them, it's more than just human wisdom. It's more than just good ideas. It's more than just opinions and people's, uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know, success plans and steps, you know, one, two, three, and all that stuff. That's okay. I'm all right with that. Trust me. Because I do that. I, I, I go in those directions. I talk to businesses. I, I help them set up plans and, and put together, you know, uh, a, an attack and a strategy and how to, how to become successful and all those things. But the things that are going to make us successful in life and uphold us when the storms of life try to hit us is the foundation of God's word. Amen. Amen? Amen. That's the only solid ground that you can put your feet on that's going to hold you up when things start crumbling around you. Amen? Yeah. And so that's why it's so important that we look at today, we're going to stand from the, from the perspective and position of the triumphant church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to speak to you from that position today. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that today's word is alive, living, and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. Father, I thank you that your word will go forth and that every person that hears your word right now, Father, that you are keeping their attention towards you. Father, I thank you that all distraction I bind in Jesus' name. I thank you that you've given us the ability to bind on, on earth and bind those things now. And I loose those things also by your spirit that would be going into them and imparti impartations of your spirit into them. And I thank you, Lord, that yokes will be destroyed and burdens will be removed by your power in Jesus' name. I thank you that as you're lifted up, all people will be drawn to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says in Matthew verse, chapter 11, verse 12, let's start there. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, it says this. And I walk around a lot. I know, Pastor, you gave me instructions. Stay within a certain amount. It's hard, man. I, I just, you know, to stay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll do the best I can here. So um, Matthew eleven twelve. 12, <clears throat> it says here, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. You know, we've got to have a backbone. We have got to have a strength about us. We have got to have this fortitude on the inside of us. We've got to have, we have to make a concerted effort to enter into the kingdom and receive from the kingdom in spite of violent opposition. Amen? Because there's going to be attacks from the enemy. There's going to be attacks from the devil. There's going to be things that, that our body says, don't do that. It's too uncomfortable. It's too, too much of a, of a commitment and you're going to have to go outside of the comfort zones in order for you to receive what God has for you, in order for you to be able to become what God wants you to be. Amen? You know, he is, he, he's the one who shapes us. He's the one who forms us. And it's, it's allowing his knife and his sword of the Spirit to cut us and to cut things and shape us and mold us so that we can become who he's made us to be. Amen? We have to remember that there's things in life that, that may try to make us follow after them, and it, it could be that it takes us off of what God's plan for our life is. You know, if your life is not built from the position of who you are in Christ, according to and standing on the foundation of God's word as the basis from which we live our lives on, we'll have a warped and distorted perspective through every physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, intellectual, financial, political, professional, and personal experiences and relationships that we go through. Are you with me? Yes. I'll say it again. If, if life is not built from the position of who we are in Christ, 
Somebody say in Christ. According to and standing on the foundation of God's word as the basis from which we live our lives, we will have a warped and distorted perspective through every physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, intellectual, financial, political, professional, and personal experiences and relationships that we go through in life. Everything's affected by that. A little while back, <clears throat> we were in a position where we had, uh, things were tightening up for some reason. And we had to make a decision, my wife and I, by faith, somebody say faith, faith. because without faith it's impossible to please him, the Bible tells us. And we had to make a decision by faith to sow a certain amount of money into a ministry because we believe that that's what God was calling us to do to break through and get out of the thing that was tightening up on us. And we didn't have a bunch of extra after that. And since that time of sowing that seed, the Lord has blessed us abundantly and above and continues to open doors of opportunity and allows the windows of heaven to continue to just shower down opportunity and financial blessing why not because of anything i did in my own wisdom but because i followed the direction and the leading of the holy spirit to give when it didn't seem like it was the right time to give because you can always come up with a reason and an excuse as to why you shouldn't you should you can always come up with a reason as to why it doesn't make sense to and it's not smart and that's not human wisdom but, you know, God's wisdom is, is greater than human wisdom because he sees things that you don't see. He knows things that you don't know. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last, the alpha and the omega. He knows the start, the finish, and everything in between. And he knows in simple obedience, the Bible tells us that we can have and eat of the fat and the good of the land. Amen? But it's as we obey and we do and follow what he says to do. Because he wants us to have an abundant life. John 10.10 10 says this, that the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. See, God is all about us having an abundant life. And I'm not just talking about finances and material things. I'm talking about life and all of that encompasses life is peace. Healing, prosperity, blessings, freedom, free from stress and oppression, free from anxiety and depression, hallelujah, free from mental torment, free from addictions and the, and, and the things that may hold us down and have caused us to trip and fall in the past. Jesus said in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that what? He might destroy the works of the devil. That word destroy means loosen, dissolve, and melt. The works of the devil. You see, because Jesus, the purpose of the Son of God was manifested. That word manifested actually derives from the meaning of lighten, to lighten, to shine, or to appear as fire. Jesus manifested with the heat of that fire, and when we allow Jesus to manifest in the things that may be causing us to trip and be in bondage, those things can, with the fire of God, melt away. You know, there was a time where certain things I was going through Long, long time ago, I mean like you know, 20 something years ago, there were certain things that I was bound by that I, I, didn't, I didn't go to a 12 step program to get through and get, get away from it. What I did was I pushed closer to the fire of God's word and the closer I was to the fire, the hotter it got and that heat burned off and melted away those things. I didn't have to focus on what I need to do. All I need to do was get closer to God. Are you with me? See, the Bible, the Bible talks about that, that, that the, no, let's turn there. But Galatians, 
I didn't, I didn't plan on saying this, but, but God did, so let's get there. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> it says this. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16. It says this. <clears throat> this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Listen to what it doesn't say. It does not say, do not fulfill the lust of the flesh, and then you'll be walking in the Spirit. There's a difference. The difference is it takes the human effort of, of what you think you can have done away, and it's not by might, not by, by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord that we get through this. Amen? It's by His Spirit. It's by His Word. Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk closer to Him, you pour more of Him in you, it removes all the other stuff and displaces the stuff and causes that stuff to spill out of you and therefore there's no more room for that any longer. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does walking in the Spirit mean? It means getting into His Word and allowing His Word to get into you. Jesus said in John 6, 63, He said, My words are spirit and they are life. The flesh profits nothing. The Word of God is full of the Spirit of God. The Word of God is full of the Spirit that removes these things. Amen. The Spirit gives life. Life and life more abundantly comes from the Spirit of God and the Word of God, which are one. Are you with me? So it's important to understand that when Jesus said that, that he was manifested, the purpose he was manifested, the Son of God was, the purpose of the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. What destroys darkness? Light. Jesus is the light who lights our way. John 8, 12 says, then Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. See, what happens is, as, as believers, even though we are believers and we have followed Jesus as our Lord and Savior, in all areas of our lives, if we're not following him, then what happens is, is there's darkness. You might be good when it comes to some, some sections of your life where there's light, but in other rooms... The lights are off. You know, when I was younger, my grandparents, my dad's mom and dad, they had a house up in North Jersey, and I was so afraid to go in the, in the basement, man, because it was dark. It was just scary. I don't know what was down there. I mean, besides the fact that there are old Italians that lived up in New Jersey, there's weird stuff already in the house. I walked in, and there was this, like, there was this oil lamp that had like, oil dripping from the, like, the lines. It was just the weirdest thing. Everything was wrapped in plastic. I mean, the, 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 the sofas had plastic on it. There were certain things you couldn't do because it's just the way it was, right? But I was definitely afraid to go down in the basement. It was like, that was the punishment. If you're going to go in the basement, you want to go in the basement? Like, like, why? Because it was dark. But then when you go down there, you turn the lights on, you're like, wow, it's not that bad. Then you turn the lights on, and you're like, oh, no, no, even though the lights were just on, and the dark comes on, it's like, it's like all of a sudden scary again, right? So you have to remember that when there's darkness in your life, maybe it's because you haven't allowed Jesus to be the leader in that area. So you might be experiencing darkness right now when it comes to relationships, you might experience darkness right now when it comes to your finances because you've not yielded them to the Lord. You've not trusted him with that. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. What's in your heart that you're not giving to him today? What area might be dark that you're experiencing darkness and the fruit of darkness? The fruit of darkness comes pain, fear, torment, doubt, 
You want to remove all that? You've got to follow Jesus in those areas because the Bible tells us right here in John 8, 12, he says, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus is the light of life for us in every area. It's up to us to make sure that we do that. It's not automatic. Just because you accept him as Lord and Savior doesn't mean everything just straightens out. You have got to now put on the armor of light, put on the works of uh, the, the, the shield of faith. You got to put on the armor of God. You got to put on and take off the works of the flesh. Are you with me? Romans 13, 12 says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Well, what is the armor of light? Psalms 119 verses 130 says, the entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. The entrance of your word, that means the opening of God's word is what gives light. Maybe the reason why you have no light is because you're not opening the word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It is a light unto my path. If you're not allowing the word of God to open up in every area of your life, it's because, and you're, and you're tripping and stumbling. It, it, the reason why you're tripping and stumbling, it's because you're not allowing the light to shine on those areas. It's simple. It gives understanding to the simple. Understanding. That means that you comprehend what you, what you are going through. You understand. You have an understanding. The light turns on. You ever have those moments where it's the light bulb moment and you're like, oh, I get it now. The understanding now, the, the understanding switch turns on and now you have understanding. The word of God will take somebody who may be illiterate and cause the understanding to turn on. I've seen the word of God take those who may have dyslexia and all these other learning problems and all of a sudden they overcome them. Why? Because the word of God straightens out the, the confusion. The word of God removes the chaos and brings order. That's how it is. Because that's how God created it. When you allow yourself to come back to the creator, the manufacturer takes care of the thing that's got a problem. <clears throat> My vehicle, I don't know what's going on with it, but between like 20 and 35 miles an hour, it's starting to sputter a little bit. You know what I got to do? There's a little sputter. You know what I got to do? I got to bring it to the manufacturer. I got to get somebody who's been, been able to, you know, trained in that to go ahead and take a look at it. Why? Because something's not right. So I got to get the manufacturer involved now. I got to get the one who created it and his people, I got to get, I got to get him to, to take a look at it so I can get it fixed. Listen, go to, your, go to your creator. He'll service you. You'll come out hitting on all cylinders, <laughs> smooth, everything all of a sudden that was, that, was, that was shaky and sputtering in life, now all of a sudden is wide open. I mean, you just like hit that gas, man, and all of a sudden there's, it's just perfect. If it's great. All the lights turn off. All the warning lights are gone, right? I'm telling you, that's what happens. You bring it to the manufacturer, you bring it to the service center, next thing you know, things are better. And you think, wow, maybe it's just a coincidence. And then you start trying to live life again, going down those rocky roads. <laughs> no, it's not a coincidence. Get yourself back on path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll make your path straight. Right? Amen. He'll make your path straight. He'll take you through and off those rocky roads. He'll, he'll, he'll level down all the, all the high places. He'll raise up the valleys. He'll make the crooked path straight. He'll make the rough places plain. Amen? Amen? You think God wants that in your life, or do you think that you just need to go through life just, you know, bumping around and just dealing with it, and I'm fighting God, and then it's tough, but we're going to get there. No. God don't want you barely getting through and crossing the finish line. He wants you going, breaking, that, that breaking with stride. <laughs> Boom! Breaking through that, that finish line. Amen? Colossians 1, verses 13 and 14 says this, that Jesus, he, Jesus, God, okay, God has delivered us, rescued us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. God has delivered us. God has delivered us. That word delivered us means rescued us. He's rescued us from the power, the force, the influence, the authority and jurisdiction of darkness. And he's conveyed us, he's translated us, he's transferred us, and he's exchanged us into the kingdom of the son of his love. See, jurisdiction. We were in the jurisdiction of the God of this world in, in, in the way that, that we lived in darkness before this. We were in the jurisdiction of darkness. Jurisdiction means the territory or sphere of activity over which the legal authority of a court or other institution extends. So we were in the jurisdiction of darkness. The enemy had the right to work hell on all over us. He had the right to, to, to beat us up. He had the right to, to, torment, to torment us mentally. He had the right to put oppression on us. He had the right to put depression on us. He had the right to cause anxiety to fill your lives and cause you to have fear. And you can't even walk because you have panic attacks. You can't go around certain people because he had the right to do that in your life. But as a believer of an almighty God, as believers in Christ, you have been removed and rescued from the corrupt jurisdiction of darkness, ruled by the God of this world, the devil, and now live under the rules and laws of the kingdom of the Son of God's love. Amen. Amen. You now have with you power everywhere you go. You don't have to be the victim of circumstance, but you can be triumphant. You can be the one who has victory over circumstance. Hallelujah. Why? Because you live in a new kingdom. You live in the new jurisdiction and under a set of new law and rules. And you don't have to allow the jurisdiction of darkness to have the right to do that anymore. When anxiety comes, resist it, the Bible says, and he will flee from you. Are you with me? The Bible tells us in Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. His kingdom is now our kingdom by which we are citizens made to rule and reign together with him under the new jurisdiction of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm preaching a lot better than you're amening. Let's go. Come on. Hallelujah. This is good news. This is good news. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verse 17, it says this, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. You see, we who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. The reason we don't reign in life and become embattled with defeat and oppression and overwhelming depression is because we go into life each day through the world's wisdom, our own understanding, the guidance of social media, fear, worry, and, debt, and doubt. You see, we reign in life through the one Jesus Christ when we live a life that's, that's from faith to faith. From faith to faith. When we get into the word of God, we see that it's a life that, that we need to, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a life of faith. And when we, when we live in a life of faith, we go from faith to faith. We go from strength to strength. We go from victory to victory. But unfortunately, a lot of people in the body of Christ are going from defeat to defeat. 
They're going from worry to worry. They're going from weakness to weakness. We've got to flip the script, y'all. See that? Eight years in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> from New Jersey, and I'm saying y'all. <laughs> I know it sounds like I'm a little... I, I know it sounds like I'm a little special while I'm saying it, but <laughs> I'm still saying it, right? I consider it an honor, Pastor. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Yeah, an Italian too, right? Reigning in life, listen, reigning in life, it says here, much more those who receive abundance of grace and, a, and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Reigning in life happens not by chance, but by choice. Are you with me? It happens not by chance. It's not for the select few. It's not for just a couple people in Christ. It's for everyone. You don't have to live in a life of defeat. You don't have to live in a life of torment. You don't have to live just barely getting along. You can live in a life through the one, Jesus Christ, reigning because you have the same abundance of grace and gift of righteousness that God has given to all his people. And it's not just for the select few. It's not just because you didn't grow up on the one side of the tracks. It's not just because, you know, well, you know, you, you don't make that much money in your job. And maybe if you made a little bit more money or if you had somebody, with, maybe your last name was different. Or maybe if you had somebody, you know, may, maybe give something to you, then, then you can get through it. No, someone did give something to you. It's the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace that God Almighty gave to you so that you can get through it. You see, what happens is, is you start looking at life through your own natural lineage and heritage rather than your spiritual lineage and heritage in God through Christ. Are you with me? <clears throat> From the book, The Triumphant Church by Kenneth E. Hagin, great, great, great book, he says this. I'm going to read you a passage here. He says, whether or not believers are victorious over the devil depends on what view they have of themselves as the church. The three views are this, militant, defeated, or triumphant. It all depends on how well they understand their position in Christ. The militant church depicts a body of believers who are not yet seated in heavenly places in Christ and are still battling to try to gain the victory over an enemy that hasn't been defeated yet by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the militant church. They don't know who they are. That's like the Marvel origin story, right? Like an origin story of a superhero. They don't know who they are. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden they get empowered and they're like, man, well, what is this? All of a sudden they recognize they got power that they never realized they had. And then they try to come into their own, right? And they're just, they're, they're just beat up in life, going from battle to battle, defeated. That's the militant church. The defeated church also gives us a picture of a church which is ignorant of the fact that they're seated with Christ and that they're supposed to be reigning in life through Jesus Christ because they're ignorant of their position in Christ or they've never used the authority they really possess. These believers are constantly ravaged by the wiles of Satan and they're in a state of continual failure and defeat. They accept it. And they say, they say things like, well, we're all broken. We're just broken in the Lord, and, and I'm, I'm broken. And, and God, God uses the broken pieces. Hey, listen, you may have been broken at one time, but in Christ, in Christ, you are not broken. You are whole in Christ. In Christ, you have been made new in Christ. Maybe in your old self, yes, but you are not your old self. It's just so hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah, but you ain't an old dog. <laughs> but the triumphant church, somebody say triumphant church. The triumphant church is the biblical perspective of the body of Christ who is seated with Christ in heavenly places. Far above all principalities and powers. The triumphant church scripturally portrays a body of believers who not only know but also exercise their authority in Christ and therefore they, they reign victoriously in life through Jesus Christ over Satan, a defeated foe. 
You have to remember, Satan is a defeated foe. He has no power over you. You don't live in his jurisdiction any longer. You've been removed from that. You are now a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and now can partake of the new rules and laws and regulations of God's word. If you allow, if you allow the enemy access to you when you're not in that enemy's jurisdiction any longer, that's on you. Well, I'm just praying that God would take care of this. God took care of it. Stop praying he's going to take care of anything. He did everything he needed to do in Christ. And when Jesus said, it is finished, it was finished. Now it's on you to take your rightful place. Are you with me? Somebody say position. Your position is your location. It's your posture. It's the way that you it's, it's the way that you view things. It's your attitude towards something, your position. Your position is a situation or set of circumstances that affects one's power to act. If you're in a position of weakness or, feel, or think you are weak, then you won't act. You feel like, well, what's the, what, what's, what's the use anyway? <sighs> Yeah, Eeyore, (laughs) right. (sighs) I just can't anymore. I'm just done. I I mean, just uh, how much more can I really take on? I mean, I'm just finished. I've had enough. This is the sound of somebody who doesn't understand their position in Christ. This is the sound of somebody who's allowed the enemy to convince them otherwise. Your position provides a filter of how you see things regarding your perspective, your view, your mindset, your thoughts and your words and your actions. That's your position. It allows you to see and have a perspective of the way that you should act, speak, and think. See, if life's not built from the position of who we are in Christ, I said it earlier, according to and standing on the foundation of God's word as the basis from which we live our lives, we're going to then have a warped and distorted perspective. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things are passed, are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Behold, that important word, behold. You have got to look at the new. If you never behold the new, you'll only continue to behold the old. If you never behold the new, you're going to only ever continue to walk in the, in, in the ways of the old. But you don't have to allow yourself to look at the old any longer because you've been made new creations in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When operating from the God-given position of one who is in Christ, we become more aware and conscious of a life that's victorious, triumphant, and empowered. When operating from the position of one who's not in Christ, we're constantly more aware and conscious, focused on, focused on feeling challenged, battled, embattled, attacked as victims of our circumstances, we're defeated, unsuccessful, and we're enslaved. I just can't get over it. I just, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. I can't. I can't. I just can't. And we become a crybaby whiner about what we can't do instead of saying, I can do all things through Christ. The greater one lives on the inside of me. He who is in me is greater than he who is in this world. God is with me, and if God is for me, then nothing can come against me. I know that God has made me more than a conqueror through him knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Man, this is so good. As God's divine power has given to us all things. Somebody say all things. It don't matter what you're going through. All things, if you look it up in the Greek, means all things. That's the beauty of this, this verse. All things that pertain to life and godliness. 
Well, I think that that includes anything. So whatever thing you go through, that is included. So if you're wondering and struggling, yeah, but, well, the word says, yeah, but, don't yeah, but. Okay? Goats, but, sheep follow. That's old. That's old. My pastor said that. Pastor Storino. That's good. I came, that was from deep within. <clears throat> I came out. That's back in my, my, my pastor from New Jersey. He used to say that. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through what? So the things that, that we need to overcome in life, they, they become overcome by us gaining knowledge because the more we allow ourselves to open the entrance of God's word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple and it says here that grace and peace is also multiplied to us from the word of God right sounds to me like the word of God <laughs> wow it'd be great if God can just give me help <laughs> he's given it to you it's in his word open it I'm telling you, the, the, the enemy will do everything he can to distract you from getting in the word. You're never going to, you're going to say, well, I don't have time. I don't, I don't, I don't. No, yes, you do. Make time. You make time for what you want. Right? As his divine power, grace and peace is multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us. He has divine power. His divine power has given to us all things. No, go back. Go back. All things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, what? Through what? Through these exceedingly great and precious promises, you may be partakers of this divine nature. So he didn't just say that, that you, you have access to the divine nature, or it's mine, but you can't have it. No, he said you can now be a partaker of it. Partake of this divine nature. Why? Having escaped, escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. This is what gets us through the things of this world, is tapping into this divine nature by allowing us to see who we are in him. Through looking at the word. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through, th 3 through 6 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual or supernatural blessing in the heavenly places, in Christ. We have been blessed with every supernatural and spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Somebody say, in Christ. There's a great book that's out there on the wall called In Him. If you've not got that book, I say get the book today. I'm telling you, get that book in him. This will help you see the mirror and give you the mirror to look into so you can see who you are in Christ. Anybody ever go to like Broadway or, or uh, you know, Barefoot here and uh, you go into like the House of Mirrors <clears throat> and the House of Mirrors have the different mirrors that you go and stand in front of and they're wavy and you stand in front of it and some of the mirrors make you look tall. Some of the mirrors make you look really, really short. Some of the mirrors like stretch your torso. Some of the mirrors make you look really strong and built. Some of the mirrors make you look really skinny. Because the mirror is reflecting back to you an image. And you're like, wow, this is crazy. Because you know that that's not the real image. But you play with it. Unfortunately, in life, we've allowed these mirrors in the house of mirrors to be what we see ourselves as. Instead of looking at the mirror of God's word and letting the true picture of who we've been created in Christ to be, we're not looking at the right picture. When do you go to, the, when you wake up, you go in, in front of the mirror, you go in front of the mirror with the intention to make sure that you look good when you leave it. You ever see somebody and you're like, they, they woke up, they looked in the mirror and they said, okay, and they're, and they're, and here we are. And they're here. <clears throat> right? <laughs> So, you know, look in the mirror and make sure that you walk out and say, yeah, this is who I'm supposed to look like today. Let the image of who you see yourself in 
Christ as be who you walk out into the world as. Too many people are trying to walk into the world looking like the world. Dressing like the world. But we should be dressing like Christ. We should put on the, old, the new man and put off the old man. Hello? Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the Beloved. We have been made accepted in the beloved. Some of y'all maybe feel like that you're not accepted. Maybe feel like you're denied. Feel like maybe you've been put off or maybe not. You've been rejected. But I'm here to tell you that you've been accepted in, in Christ. You've been accepted in the beloved. Some of y'all are trying to get the attention of some people that you should make, make, make it a, a different, a, a, you should change who you're trying to get the attention of and make it go towards Christ. Because he's accepted you already. He already has chosen you. You're accepted in him. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Let's read this real quick. <clears throat> We're almost there. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. But Paul, it's a great prayer. You can pray this prayer every day for yourself. Paul's praying this here. He says, Therefore I also, after I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the power of that worketh in us, according to the power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he works in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him Jesus, to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. We are the church, we're the body of Christ, and he is the head, Jesus. When the body gets up in the morning, the head gets up with it. It's not like you get up and your body gets up and the head just stays on the pillow. Right? Right? No, you got to take the head with you. When you go out into the world, you need to take Jesus with you. He's the head. We're his body. Are you with me? And he is the head over all things to the church. We are his body. We need to go out into this world with him. Bring him to the world. Amen. Everywhere we go. Luke chapter 10, verses 18 and 19, Jesus said this. He said, I said, to the, he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus gave this to the church, to his followers. You have this. All of the authority that I read and I talk about from the word of God today, God, Jesus said, I now give you this same authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy. Why? Because you don't live in that jurisdiction of the enemy any longer. You are now under the new jurisdiction and you have a new ruler and you have a new Lord and you have a new set of rules. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You can... Boldly proclaim and stand on the truth of this verse and say, Lord, I thank you that nothing shall by any means hurt me. You can stand on this word in faith and expect it to happen. 
You can trample on the head of worry, anxiety, panic attacks, mental health. You can take control and authority over it. Why? Because you have been given the power through Jesus. See, Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. You don't have to let your mind be tormented. You don't have to allow your, so- your thoughts to, to rule you and cause you to fall into anxiety and, and depression and you can't get through it, but you don't understand, Joe. I'm clinically depressed. Like, I'm clinically, so you don't understand. This is, this is something beyond that. You don't know because you don't have that. And because you don't have that, that's the reason why you can't relate to me. No, maybe I can't relate to you. But Jesus was touched with the feeling of the, our infirmities, and he destroyed the power of that. And you don't have to let it stay. You can take authority and walk in who you've been called to walk in. But I've been trying. That's your problem. You're doing it in your own strength. You're trying in your own ways. You're trying to, by the, the, the guidance of the therapist and, and all the other things. and Get to the word. But you don't know, Joe. Yeah, I might not know. But God knows. And the word of God is true. And let every man be a liar. And he is true. His word is true. It never fails. It's full of power. And it gives you the authority to take over those things that are trying to take you over. Philippians 4, 6 through 9 says, be anxious for nothing. If, if, listen, if God said to be anxious, if the word of God says to be anxious for nothing, you can be anxious for nothing. He'll never ask you to do something you can't do. <clears throat> Think about that. Then he'd be unjust. And as a just judge, when we stand before him, we would not be able to honestly stand before him, and he wouldn't allow that. He's a just judge. He's a just God, right? It's unjust to tell someone to do something that th- they, they can't do. You can be anxious for nothing. You can be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. See, that's what's not happening. <clears throat> that's the problem. We're not, we're not doing that part. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we are not letting our requests be made known to you, Lord. Therefore, we're anxious for everything, like everything. Like, like not even, I mean, like, can't even get out of the bed anxious. Like, can't even, like, get out of the closet because we, we're so anxious as to what we're wearing. Like, is this good enough? Is this not good enough? And we're anxious. And what does it say here? What's the next part? What's the result? The peace of God then. See, you do this, and then this is what happens. You know, the Bible says that in Proverbs 4, it says that it's medicine. The word of God, the words are medicine to our flesh. They're life to us and medicine to us if we allow it. We'll very, we'll very quickly and easily say yes to the medicines that are given and prescribed to us, which I'm okay. If, the, if you're going to take a prescription that you believe that that's going to help you get to the next point and next level to get past it and overcome it, I'm fine with that. But yet we put our faith in those things much more quickly than we do the word of God that will provide to you the very results that it says it will. Because God is faithful. And the peace of God, if we do the first part, then the peace of God that that surpasses all understanding, it's going to guard our heart and mind through Christ. Are you with me? See, Jesus said in Luke 4, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is available all to us through the word of God. We can be set free. 
We can see in the areas that we once were blind in. We can walk away from the things that were once held, holding us captive. We can, the, the door has been wide open and we can walk out free in Jesus' name. He set at liberty those who are oppressed. If you feel that you're oppressed today, walk away today in liberty. Freedom. You are free to go. What does a, a captive or prisoner want to hear? You are free to go. You're free. You can leave now. My Uncle Dave, who led me to the Lord many years ago, went to a, a hearing when he was in jail. <clears throat> he got saved in jail. Gave his life to Jesus in jail. Prison ministry reached him in jail. The word of God's not chained. And it can penetrate and break through any area. The, the word of God reached my Uncle Dave. My Uncle Dave wrote a letter to me and I got saved. The word of God will get to everyone it needs to get to so that God's will can be accomplished. The seed of God's word was planted in him. So you don't even know the impact you're going to have until you stand before Almighty God. You're going to see all of the, the chain reactions of what happens from that one word you spoke to that person. You don't know what it could do because it can reach someone else who can go out and shake the world for Jesus. Well, Uncle Dave went to go stand before the judge in what was supposed to be a life sentence. Instead, he heard, you're free to go. <laughs> Why? Because you're set free. I'm sure he didn't say, you sure, you sure judge? You want to relook this over? You know, you, know what the, you know what the captive or prisoner does once they're said, you're free to go? Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Where's the door? Okay, hallelujah. Thank you. I'm out of here. Right. Let's go. All right. Like now? Yeah. Okay, let's go. You are set free. Walk in that freedom today. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No power of the devil will continue to hold you bound in Jesus' name. You have now overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And from this point on, it's up to you to wake up every day and put on the full armor of God and walk in that freedom. The Bible tells us here in Ephesians chapter 6, it says here, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having gird your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hallelujah. You now have been empowered. You now are set free. You now have been able to walk out today completely free of anything that was, that was holding you back. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand on your feet with me. <clears throat> if you, first of all, if you have been dealing with pain in your body, come on up here and you're going to be set free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we command every area in Jesus' name to be healed. We thank you now. I curse all pain in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord, that you release him in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be healed. In the name of Jesus, 
be healed in Jesus' name. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Pain be gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Be healed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, healing in Jesus' name. Healing in Jesus' name. Receive in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, be healed in Jesus' name. We thank you. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we curse every pain. In Jesus' name, be healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you had problems in an area, then move that around and loosen it up. It's gone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Have I prayed for you? In the name of Jesus, be healed. We curse every demonic influence and spirit of infirmity. I, I bind you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hands. Father, we thank you. If you are here and are dealing with tormenting thoughts, come up here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you're dealing with tormenting thoughts and thoughts of suicide or thoughts that have been plaguing your mind and causing you to, to doubt life, come up here in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Never again in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The power of the Lord is with you, and it's by my spirit, saith the Lord, that you will always overcome. And if you allow yourself to go back to that thing, that thing will then take you down and keep you imprisoned. But it's up to you to stand up in the authority and power that you've been given in Christ. It's not by might. It's not by strength. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you've never asked Jesus to be your Savior. You've never asked him to come into your heart. Today is your day. If that's you and you want to make Jesus your Savior, lift your hand where you're at right now. If you've never asked him, Jesus, I believe that you are my Lord. I want to give you a chance. I never want to leave any opportunity of, of, of bringing someone to Jesus and allowing him access into their lives. So we want to we give you a chance today if you've never done that. If you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, lift your hand where you're at and I'm going to pray with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody in here at all? Just want to make sure we make sure we do that. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Give him a hand, y'all. Come on. Thank you.